Convention. You are in violation of the People's Federation Treaty. This sector is off limits. Extricate yourselves from the premises immediately or risk suffering lawful punishment. This is an order. Comply. Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Aelgarau, Redfall. And it's looking like we're in a bit of trouble. A forgotten beast, another forgotten beast. And this one's a bit different than the other ones that have showed up. A bit more dangerous. It's the forgotten beast I missed our bill regator. A giant humanoid composed of rose gold. It has a pair of spindly antenna, and it has a gaunt appearance. Beware, it's poisonous vapors. I don't know what this thing's deal is, but I'm willing to bet it was created long, long ago. Way before the world was as dark as it is now. Military purpose, perhaps? Easy to assume. All I know is that this thing is going to be extremely well armored. It's made of rose gold. Basically, entirely of rose gold. And the vapors, that's not good either. Kind of like what that mud monster had. We were fortunate enough that that didn't affect our Martians, but this one here could be a different story. So what we're going to do is, of course, lock down Red Vault. Got to get all the Martians out of the caves down here and up into the actual settlement. Hopefully they can make it there in time. Okay, and how are we looking up here, guys? Doing good? Yeah, looks like we're good up here. Stay safe, Martians. And now the question is, if I lock these doors over here, will this thing try to get in? Hmm, it does appear to be. That is not excellent. Well, okay, having a look down here, we're gonna try to build a wall real quick because none of those, uh, that whole bridge contraption that we have set up up top, that's not set at all. Remember this thing here with the gun emplacements that we're gonna have up in the, in the ceiling there? Yeah, it's not, it's not done. So we have Martians on their way right now to get that thing all set. Gotta quit dragging ass on this Martians. Okay, there we go. We got that wall halfway built and oh, well, it looks like that, uh, that creature's gone now. So it's out somewhere in the caves. That's probably for the best. Let's just hoping it could stay occupied for now. Oh, oh, damn it. The traders, I forgot all about them. They're just about to leave. We'll have to see if we can do some trading real, real quick. All right, Glitty, come on. Get up there real quick, real quick. Don't have much time left. Okay, there, we're good. He's there at least. Um, one second. Have a look down below. That wall is still not finished, but the beast is not there again. So I think we're all set for now. I'm gonna keep work going on these fortifications and we'll do some trading real, real quick. We've already moved a ton of goods here. Mostly those scepters, remember? Tell you what, we're just gonna mark them all for trade. Yeah, a decent amount. And let's see what we can get here. Leather, cloth. Uh, hmm. They do have a couple of these drones. We'll take those and uh, we'll take some drinks. Ugh, fine, don't need this cloth. Done, a decent trade. And I should note too that we've already dealt with Aunga and requested items for next year. And we're hoping to get our hands on some steadfast exo armor, as well as exo arms, exo legs, and helmets, and also some food, drink, leather, and cloth. And they requested sword headed rail rifles. So pretty similar to what we're already making. Should work out pretty well. Anyways, having a look back over here, these bridges are all set now. So our goal, just as a refresher, we're gonna open up those doors downstairs, let that beast in. And the plan is to get it in this chamber right here, close up all three of these bridges around the perimeter. And then once the beast is stuck in here, up in the ceiling, we have this little uh, fortified nook and our gunners are gonna be in there. And assuming that thing comes within range, they can shoot down at it. It should work out pretty well. Also going to call the water seekers to the fortified lookout. Okay, there they are, all in place. Looking down here, that wall is down now. Oh, you know what? I had another idea. I'm gonna lock this door again. Hoping that thing stays out briefly. And what I think we should do is set some of our uh, mechs and stuff to be brought over to this chamber right here. So that they stand a good chance of slowing down that creature when it finally does come up here. That way we could be sure to get those gates closed in time. Gonna take a look downstairs in the meantime, and it looks that I Mist is cooperating. Just out in the tunnels right now, hunting down thin men and other cave things. We'll have the way open in just a minute. We've collected actually a few light walkers and uh, standard walkers as well. Feeling more and more confident by the second actually. Oh, we also got those drones thrown in here. Cannon drones, missile drones. Yeah, that's gonna work out for sure. Yep, all right, Martians, you ready for this? The door is unlocked, and all the Martians should be where they have to be right now. This sector is off limits. Ah yes, here it comes, working its way through the caverns towards our home, Red Vault. Of course, it's got to take its sweet ass time. Just has to smash these doors down first. Can't just walk through them and continue on to our fortress. Whatever, just hurry up, please. Oh, uh, guess it's just leaving. 
Oh, and uh, now it's coming back. And proceeding through the door. Okay. That's weird. But yes, here it comes up towards Ale Grau. Gonna slow things down in a second. Here it comes. And it has entered the chamber. The walkers are moving in. My friends, it looks like it was that easy. Well, isn't that something? <laughs> looks like we made a big deal out of nothing, apparently. Rose gold. More like a big piece of junk. Huh, okay. Well, I'd like to have a closer look at that combat log, just so we can get a better idea of what happened. Noticing, too, that those gates aren't closed yet. Luckily, though, I don't think we needed them. Why aren't they closed, though? Uh, let's try again, just real quick, before we check that combat log. There it goes. And there go the gates. Okay, it's really not that bad. Yeah, luckily it wasn't worse. Okay, anyways, combat log. Okay, here we go. We start off with a barrage of bullets. Uh, not sure where these bullets are coming from. They may have been coming from our Martians up in the ceiling, or they could have been coming from some of those robot things we had out in that room. Yeah, not too sure. We had a light missile walker get beaten up. I think one of them died. It wasn't Missy. It's okay. Yeah, it looks like things went over pretty well, actually. One of those initial bullets destroyed its leg, knocking it down on the ground, and then everything just piled on and started kicking the hell out of it. Yeah, I think it was a good call to use those machines in our defense. Seemed to really have worked out well for us. Ah, and the creature was killed by one of our missile drones, the ones that we just picked up from the traders. Smashed its head by kicking it. Wonderful. Well, good job all. Kind of disappointing that that was so easy, honestly. But I guess we've been underestimating all these walkers and stuff out here. They really are strong. Especially when you take into consideration that, even more disappointingly, it doesn't look like any of our Martians were able to actually fire down. That really stinks. I thought for sure they'd be able to angle their shots like downwards from up here, you know? I don't know, maybe we could figure something out still. What a pain. Oh well. Alright guys, get out of here, will ya? Back to work, everyone. Yeah, that was pretty damn good. Really did a lot to boost my confidence. A dangerous amount, I think. <laughs> I mean, that thing should have been a lot tougher than it was. We took down that thing, no problem. We were able to kill that Garuda, remember that? No problem. Maybe we should start flexing a little bit, eh? Oh, that's right, we got a migrant wave during that too. Actually, there's a couple things we didn't mention. But yeah, during that we got a migrant wave, so we're, now we're up over a hundred Martians. And we also got this message too. There's a new settlement, Narrow Twinkles. It's been founded a day's travel to the northeast and look to our thriving economy for its future prosperity. That might have something to do with our recent trade. Excellent. Well, we'll keep it in mind. Oh, and uh, speaking of new settlements, looks like we have another one too. Pink Perplexed. Founded a half day's travel to the northeast. Well, more Martians in the area couldn't hurt, right? Oh my goodness. Warning. Red. Full. Hostile organism detected in warp cavity 1. <laughs> Alright, alright, another forgotten beast coming in. Jusselak. A towering eyeless spider. It has large mandibles and undulates rhythmically. Its slate gray exoskeleton is waxy. Beware its poisonous bite. Poisonous bite is not that bad. That's nothing to worry about at all. But this is a spider, which means that it also has webs, which is extremely, extremely bad news. Well, I'm not gonna be slowing things down as much as we did before. We already have things locked down. The water seekers are up in that fortified area again. If they can shoot out, that'd be great. We already moved all those machines down underneath. So we should pretty much be all set to go. I'm just really hoping everybody can get safe in time. It does look like it's gonna take this thing uh, a few minutes to get up anyways. Oh, yeah, it's not gonna take that long though, certainly. Here it comes, straight on up. I have already pulled that lever too, like just now. But it seems to be a little, little distracted. Yeah, I don't know what this dumb thing's doing, come on. Let's get up here already. We've been opening and closing those gates up top, just in preparation for the thing to come. I'm trying to close them up right behind it. Oh, oh, okay, okay, it's up, it's up. Um, gotta have to order those gates to be closed right now. I'm not sure how to feel about this one. I thought that last one was gonna be difficult, but didn't turn out to be too bad. Not too sure what this Martian's doing. We just had a Martian die. This spider doesn't seem to be having too much trouble. It's already killed quite a few things. Oh, there we go. We killed it. 
Okay, we did get all those gates closed. The spider is in here, but it killed a few things, as I just said. It killed at least one of our drones, a couple walkers, and a Martian. Not anybody that we know, thankfully. Although, I think they've been in the fort for a while. That was Bleedos Ladusint. Silk processor. A silk processor? Were they actually coming out here to gather silk? Oh, I'm sure they were, actually. Oh, that's... That's unfortunate and stupid. Oh, well. At least we killed it. I did see this time some of our water seekers shooting down, too. So that's good. These fortifications can work. Yeah, there we go. Good job, fellas. Two beasts down. Starting to get more formidable by the day. Okay, how are we feeling, Red Vault? Perky, I assume. We're handling ourselves very well these days. How about we have a look around the place to see what's new? Things have been awfully exciting around here, and I think it's time we cool it down a bit. Well, first off, you'll notice that most of the surfaces here in Red Vault are nice and smooth now. Everything is all cleaned up. Boulders are out of there, no problem whatsoever. Also, right here specifically, you'll see a bunch of new bedrooms. We almost have enough for everyone now, and we certainly will after this. Yes, right down here. I'll zoom out a bit. You can see our new bedroom wing. Very spacious. After this is all set, we'll definitely have enough room for everyone. Still not sure how many rooms it is exactly, but it's enough. Yeah, looking pretty good. Alert. Red. Three. Uh, what is it now? Multiple nanotechni masses detected. Ah, ha, ha. okay, out here in the wastes, we see a nanotechni golem. Remember those things? A tad spooky. Yeah, it looks like we have one over here, just kind of wandering around, minding its own business. And there's another up here, right outside of Red Vault. Oh, that's interesting. What do you say? We think... You think we could take these things out? Gotta be worth a try, right? What do you think, Water Seekers? Let's try this out. They can't be all that bad. Certainly not worse than that rose gold giant thing. Oh, actually gonna pause right there. I just saw a drone go running away from that group of Martians. And it was killed, like, immediately by this nanotechni golem. Um, spooky. Yeah, probably just got lucky, right? <laughs> we'll give it a try going nice and slow. We'll follow the golem. I mean, it's not like we'll be able to stop the combat halfway through. Once we start, that's it. So, let's just see how it plays out. They are moving in. I don't see any bullets being fired, which is distressing to say the least. Here go those Martians running in bayonets and lowered. I see a wounded Martian there. Two wounded Martians. Three. That's bad. But they killed it. They did kill it. But... Yeah, there are some wounds around. Damn, okay, so these things are tough. Especially when we're not using bullets. What's wrong with you guys, huh? I know we have bullets. Damn it. Okay, uh, uh let's assess the wounds real quick. All right, we have Quaggle here. Head's bruised. Upper spine bruised. That's not too bad. And we have Yud Clam. Bruised lungs. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. We just gotta get someone to uh bring this guy down here to the hospital. Oh, no, they died. Okay, that, uh, I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. Okay, so that one guy with the uh, the whole neck thing there, I guess he died. Quaggle. Rest in peace, my friend. Okay, yes, we do have bullets. Not too sure why they're not grabbing them. That's bothersome. Next time, Martians, please be sure to grab some. It'll help you out. Hmm. <laughs> you know, it strikes me as mighty unfortunate that I just skip over the death of that one Martian. I know I tend to do it all the time. I mean, we already had a Martian die earlier in the episode. But, you know, if you think about it, I mean, it, it's an event right there. We just saw it last episode. All those people we looked at were affected by Martian deaths in Red Vault. That was someone. That was someone who died right there. That wasn't just some little nothing that stopped moving. That was a citizen of Red Vault. A person. And I feel like it should be more monumental than that. At least for this one individual. We can't stop gameplay for every person that dies. But maybe for this one. I mean, let's just have a closer look just for the hell of it. What do you say? All right, now, they've been safely interred over here, in our morgue, in one of these coffins. Their final resting place. Uh, Quaggle's final resting place. There are 88 coffins in here right now, and 29 of them are filled up. I guess that puts into perspective how many we've lost so far. Right, we lost at least 20 during the dehydrating. Not a small number. And then the rest to just random mishaps, mutant attacks and stuff. But yes, back to Quaggle. They're in here now, and we're going to jump out of fortress mode here for a second, and actually going to remain in fortress mode, but at a previous time. A time when Quaggle was still alive. Now, we don't know this guy at all. To us, he's a completely fresh face. But here we could see him in one of his last days, spending his time in our meeting hall. Quaggle Holyedja. I saw Dizzy Kisplot's recite boat. Suddenly the fool knows at the tender snacks. It's interesting. The Tender Snacks being the name of our meeting hall. Looks like Quaggle was listening to some poetry, being told by Vissi, another of our security officers. Yeah, just having a good time in here, talking with his friends. Seems like a good fella. He likes to help others. 
a trait that he earned after seeing somebody die. Other than that though, he seems fairly neutral in things. Nothing too extreme anywhere. He dreams of falling in love. That's something. Actually, that'll take us over to his relationships. And we could see here that, well, he only had a couple of friends. Aunga Thrunt all day, Outpost Liaison, Zetar Vertmostos, Rakshasa, and Bli Osquetekni, the gunsmith, as well as Gut, the security officer. Uh, might have been a budding romance there. Hard to say. Guess we'll never know now. One really interesting thing is that, if we have a look at his kills list, he's the one who killed Merc Umbra, the Faded Knight. And that was the spider that we just took down. And just as a side note while we're here, this thing killed three light missile walkers, one light cannon drone, one light missile drone, and a standard walker in that attack. Tough bastard. But yes, Quaggle was the one who put it down, firing from up in those fortifications. A good shot. As for Quaggle's history, really not that much to say unfortunately. He was 35 years old and didn't really get around to too much before he moved to Red Vault, joined up with the Water Seekers, killed the Forgotten Beast, and then was killed by the Golem. It says he's suffocated too, so I think that neck damage he sustained was actually a lot worse than I thought. Paralyzed the guy. Gruesome. You know, while we're here, maybe we should have a look at his god too, Orwell, a god not worshipped by the Martians typically. Strange, actually, I don't think us Martians have any gods of our own. I think we mostly just worship gods from other civilizations. Pretty interesting. Anyways, Orwell was most often depicted as a male Yaksha, and was associated with plants and animals. A nature god. Interesting. I looked into it a bit, and Yaksha are kind of like Rakshasa, except not as, uh, violent or terrifying? Not as violent or terrifying. I'm still not too sure what their deal is. Regardless, it's interesting. Haven't seen this god yet. Alright, from here, let's jump back into present day. Yep, here we are. Present day. And life just keeps rolling forward here in Red Vault. I've already taken a look at some of his friends and none of them seem particularly affected by his death. Not to say they aren't affected, it's just they've seen death before, so they're kind of used to it now. You hate to glaze over something like that, but even the Martians are at this point. Just kind of how it has to be, I suppose. Oh well. Rest well, Quaggle. And everyone, let's move on. We've been really trying to pull things together here in Red Vault these days. Got a lot of phases now, and we need to work on our efficiency. Got a bunch of those guns that have to be made. Remember the, uh, sword-headed rail rifles? And it takes a lot to make them. Gotta get to fuel, gotta make two different kinds of nanotechny. So we've added a lot more Martians to those tasks. Built a little minecart system over here. It's working out pretty well. Our Martians go down, pick up wood, and just put it in this top pile over here. And then load it in the minecart to be brought over to the wood burner. We could have gone through the trouble of making a minecart track all the way down. But, eh, it's a hassle. Might still do it though. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's certainly worth thinking about, right? I think we need a big project here in Red Vault. Now that things are starting to come together anyways, no sense in sitting around on our laurels. We've got defense, we've got production, housing's almost completed. Yeah, we should really start throwing our weight around a bit, I'm thinking. That'd be nice. We'll put some thought into it, how about? Anyways, before we wrap up here, how about a quick look around at some of our favorite phases? Well, like over here, you can see in our hospital, Sinx Bawar, head doctor. She's currently awaiting treatment from one of our doctor's assistants. Nothing bad, don't worry. Just one of her toes was broken, I, I think in an ogre attack. Wasn't a big deal, really. Just a just a little thing. She'll be back up in no time. Over here we could see Huir, the quarrier, actually going to fetch some water. For sinks, probably. What a good Martian. Over here we could see Zetar, our Rakshasa friend, on his way to the temple to do some worshipping. A shockingly devout fellow. Really quite loyal to his Martian god there. <laughs> ah yes, and over here we see Oogle, little Oogle, playing make-believe over in the food stockpile. One of his favorite haunts, it's kind of strange honestly, but couldn't blame the guy. I couldn't blame the guy, certainly. Great place to be, just hanging out, playing some games, eating some food. Yeah, not bad. Little dude's gonna grow up well, I'm thinking. And what a great place to grow up, too. Redfall. Bastion of peace in the long night. Let's just hope nothing takes it away from us, eh? And if anything did try to take it away, they'd have quite the fight on their hands. As has been proven, we do have another full squad now. 20 Martians, all armed with those rifles. Pretty well defended, though I wouldn't really want to push it, I don't think. On Earth, too much confidence could be a real killer.
Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome to the end of the episode where we're going to be talking about some behind-the-scenes things. And yes, I did leave you off on a cliffhanger once again. I'm a big fan of them. I don't do it on purpose. I'm not writing these attacks in. It just happens the very last second here. And to let it play out, it might take a few minutes. So yeah, don't worry about it. Just let it wet your palate for next time. It should be a good one. I don't know what the hell is going to happen here, uh, but we'll see soon enough. Exciting. Anyways, okay, before I, uh, we even get into this here, something I need to talk about, something I really want to talk about and have not talked about nearly enough is the creator of this mod here, Squamous. Really good guy, really extremely creative and driven guy. I can appreciate that, certainly. Squamous is the creator of the Long Night mod here, as well as several others. I'm gonna put a link to his stuff down in the description below. Now, I've got a request for you, my bearded bastards. If you've enjoyed this Long Night content so far, or maybe you've played it yourself, or another of Squamous's mods, uh, the guy needs some help. He does. He doesn't have a platform like YouTube, like I have. And so it's pretty hard for him to get his stuff out there like I can. You know, I just post my stuff up here on YouTube and the algorithm will take it and give it to people. That's how you got here. Squamish can't have that. And so I'm going to try to help him out a bit, okay? If you like this content or if you enjoy his stuff, I would highly suggest you check in the description of this video here for a link to his Patreon. He has a Patreon and I'm sure anything you could offer would be totally appreciated. Imagine a world where this guy could put his all into making these mods. If you could help him out, it would just help our Dwarf Fortress community out so much. Thank you for hearing me out, and thank you on behalf of Squamous as well. I'm sure he appreciates him. Uh, but yes, this episode. Behind the scenes stuff, let's see. Uh, first off, I want to note that Red Vault has not been running very smoothly, and I do not know why. So if you're watching and you notice the, the screen being a little jittery, like, that's why, I guess, it's being mysteriously laggy at points. Like, the game will run, and then pause, and then run, then pause, and run, and pause, and it's pretty annoying. Probably some weird pathing issue with stuff down in the caves or something. I don't know. It's a pain. Oh, also, another thing while I'm thinking of it, that nothing animal? It's not a nothing. That's just a bug, I guess. <laughs> It's supposed to have a name. It's like a winged preservate, I believe is what its name's supposed to be. But something happened and the game just thinks it's called a nothing. But that's fine. That's absolutely fine. It's one of those bugs that we just kind of go with. Maybe there's so many creatures in the long night and so little societal structure that people just refer to some animals as nothings. I kind of like that idea, actually. And so that's why it's called a nothing. Nobody cares to name the species. That's what we'll go for with this playthrough anyways. I'm trying to think. Um, all right, one last thing. I'm kind of upset at that, that we haven't had any large scale attacks yet. Like we're getting attacked by beasts, but whatever. I want something bigger to come at us. You know, I want a siege. I want to be able to fight off a horde of some sort of horrible mutant, whatever the hell's with those rifles. I think that'd be really badass. So I'm thinking that maybe at the beginning of next episode, we'll send out a Martian, go attack something maybe. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Oh, and on top of that, maybe we'll start some sort of a me mega structure sort of a thing. That'd be badass. Real badass. Something underground. How about just like a giant, like an underground tower? structure or something. Maybe we'll start making time go a little bit faster in this thing. We'll have to see if that lag cooperates. That's been a kind of a pain, actually. Oh, also, I said I was going to do four more episodes of the Red Vault here, but like, um, maybe we'll just let it go for a little bit longer. Like, it'd feel kind of stupid if next episode was the last one. I don't think there's gonna be a problem with letting it get too out of hand. It's not like a story thing in my mind. So I don't think there'd be a big problem with just kind of cutting it off when we're done with it, you know? Eh, we'll see. Play it by ear. No worries. If you like it, it's going to keep going for a bit. If you don't like it, it's going to end before too long. Don't worry about it. Well, I think that's going to do it right there. Remember, think about Squamous. The guy's doing some great work. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you, especially you being here watching. It means a lot. And I certainly hope to see you next time here in Elgarau, Redfall. And until then, you bearded bastard. Peace.